And welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the Sundial Crochet Placemats just like you see here. You can use two colors or even one color and I'll show you what it looks like for both. But before we do so, let's listen to this real quick. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound, it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So let's quickly review this pattern. We have a nice size placemat just like you see it's black and white and let me just show you the example that I did here off camera. This example is actually wrong because I misread the instructions and I want to tell you a little bit about that. It's easy to always show you something perfect but it's nice to always show you where you screw up too so that you don't follow the same mistakes that I just did. So you're gonna notice that it's a nice easy pattern to be able to follow and you can use the Bernat Maker Home Deck yarn. You can also use the Bernat uh, Fashion or Maker Fashion yarn as well. So those are the exact same yarns. One's geared for fashion, one's geared for home deck. They are both different color lines so you may want to mix and match in order to do so. But I want to direct your attention to page number three because that's my favorite page and that's the diagram to make it easier to follow. So before this scares you and makes your head turn in circles, everything is really quite easy to be able to follow. The thing that I screwed up on the most is that I was watching television and I accidentally missed a two different uh, rounds in order to do this and so I screwed up my entire pattern. So my uh, place mat wasn't as big as it's supposed to be and it buckled as a result. So I guess my biggest tip for you if you're listening at all is that you want to make sure that you are just keeping track on what rounds you're on and you're going to be noticing that the way that this pattern plays is that you'll notice that you're going to be overlaying stitches on top of each other and because of that it gets very easy to be able to um, misunderstand where you are if you're not recording when you're finishing a round. So let's take a look at a sample. I'm going to show you the black and white sample. I'm also going to show you the solid color sample. So as I mentioned I screwed up on the black and white sample here. I missed a couple rounds and it caused it to be much smaller than it was supposed to be and it was buckling as a result of me doing that and I was trying to figure out what was you know, going wrong. See it doesn't want to sit flat like the other one. So I thought to myself what happens if you do this pattern in a solid color? Look at the beautiful texture that you have on this. Isn't that wonderful? So even if you want to do a two color tone like so or a solid color I think this particular project goes either way. Let's turn it over to look at the back. So when you're using this black and white or you're using any other colors you're going to notice that on the back the yarn strands carry up. So you never have to cut your yarn weaving your ends when you finish a round. You just leave it sitting in behind and then we're gonna grab it. Today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to do the multicolor and if you don't want to do that and have a solid then you just don't have to carry your yarn like you're seeing here. So let's take a look at the back of the other sample here. You can see that it's nice and flat. Just really quite wonderful but the top here looks like, reminds me of the top of an old um, stove. You know those ones that light up as you, in a circle. That's what it reminds me of. I'm not sure if that's old or not but certainly I used to have that when I used to rent apartments. So it looks really quite good and um, I'm really quite excited about this particular pattern and I think you will be too. So what do you need today? You're gonna need a six millimeter size J crochet hook today and your Bernat Maker Fashion or Bernat Maker Home Deck yarn in order to play. Let's take a look closely at this yarn. So here's what this yarn looks like up close. You look like it's a knitted cord and it's extremely strong. It's very hard to break and you're going to notice it looks like a cord as you're going to do it. So it's kind of almost like t-shirt yarn in some way but it's not like t-shirt yarn. It's kind of just like a, a, a knitted tube and it's really easy to be able to learn to crochet and knit with this particular yarn and it glides through your hands like butter. It's really quite ama amazing. So I'm gonna be using uh, two colors today. I'm gonna be using gray and blue. Uh, the gray was from the actual home deck yarn and the blue is actually from the maker version of the of the fashion. So you can see that you can just mix and match either way. So I just happened to roll these up uh, into a nice ball just for filming reasons to make it easier as I teach you. Let's begin and let's take a closer look at the diagram and then we'll continue. So here's a closer look at the diagram and we're gonna start off in the bottom. Every other row changes color. So whenever you finish a color you're going to change it to the next color. So just imagine that as you're going. So it never does the same color twice in a row. So when we go to look at this you'll notice that there's stitch work, uh, lines going down through the actual existing stitches because you're playing with layers. And so you'll look at it. See these two over here? They jump down over here and this chain will lay in front. So when we go to look at it from a real perspective and maybe I can just show you here easily is that you can see here when we did this round that round came all the way. So this is the, the chain that is existing in the front. 
So you can see that there's layers going on. So it's actually not a hard thing to do. The only difference between all the rounds is that there's become, it has to grow equally. So the designer has you doing um, growth incrementally as we go and we'll touch base on those as we go. So what I'm gonna do for myself is that I'm gonna write down the rows or the rounds, sorry, on the side of the page and then I'm going to be able to um, keep track of myself and make sure I don't screw up like I did before and other than that it's really not a hard pattern. It's just a matter of uh, paying attention to where you are in the pattern. So there's a total of 18 um, different rows or rounds as you go all the way around and then you're gonna get to the top and the final round will just simply be um, a reverse single crochet as you get there. So we're gonna start next and let's begin. Grab your crochet hook and yarn and let's begin. So let's begin your project today. We are going to start off with a slip knot and then we are going to insert our hook in. So to start the very center of your placemat you're going to do a total of chain two. So one and two and then we're going to begin round number one together. We might as well start right away. So we're gonna put six single crochets in the second chain from the hook which is the beginning chain and we're gonna put six single crochets into that one. So let's start that. So we're just gonna go one and two and three This is four, five, and this is six. So you got six in here. But now we have to join it with a slip stitch to the beginning. Here's the thing. Remember I said we're changing color every other round. So when we go to insert into the sixth one back, so just count back. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And if you could identify the, the beginning one, you can do that quite easily. Just slide your hook in. But don't use the same color to be able to pull through. I want you to grab your next color that you're going to use and just create a slip knot just for extra security to begin. And I want you to use that color, put it onto the hook and pull through and through. So every time we get to the end we have to use the opposite color in order to finish it off. So that was the end of round number one. So moving forward in today's tutorial it's just about a repeating pattern that makes sense in order to go all the way around these things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kick you off with the repeat pattern for each, get you to do that and then meet me back at the end of each round and there will be a stitch stop notice uh, when we come to the last 10 seconds of each of the segments. So we're going to begin this round, round number two with this new color. We're going to chain one and what we're going to do is that in the same one that you did the join you want to put in two single crochets. So one and two and then go into the next one and put two. So what I want you to do is go each stitch all the way around to put two single crochets and I'll meet you at the end of this round. So now we're all the way around. What I want you to do before you go any further, grab the opposite color and pull tight. So it's a nice tight join in there and then just insert your hook into the beginning single crochet right at the top and using the opposite color. So I'm gonna use gray in this case gray and I'm gonna pull through and through and then I'm gonna pull, pull that blue one that I just released nice and tight. So now we're going to continue on now with round number three. So let's begin round number three. We are going to chain four which counts as a double crochet and chain one. So let's just do that. So one, two and three there's your double crochet and four is your chain one space. You're gonna come to the very next stitch on the, uh, the round and you're going to double crochet in and then you're going to chain one. So chain one and then go to the next double crochet or sorry go to the next stitch and do a double crochet and then chain one. So then go to the next one, double crochet and chain one. Please do that all the way around for round number three. So coming up all the way back around and remember you got your last double crochet in, chain one and you are going to then join it to the top of the first or sorry to the third stitch up or the third chain up in the original. Now we're not gonna use this gray to finish off and what we're gonna do is pull the blue tight and then pull through. So we're using the blue then to change over and then we're gonna pull the gray that we're using tight. So that was concluding on round number three. Let's move along to round number four. So let's begin round number four. Of all the rounds this is the most awkward one of the rounds that I found in my opinion. So using the blue we're going to chain up one and we're gonna put one single crochet in the same one that you did the join. 
and watch what we're going to do this time. So what we need to do is that we need to play into the same stitch that you just put this double crochet into but you have to shift the work forward in order to access this same stitch and then we're going to put in a single crochet on the top of that stitch. So watch what I do. So we're gonna double crochet into the same stitch that this gray one is into. So we're just gonna come from behind and then just pop it out through the, the front and going into that same stitch. See how it kind of bends it out of the way and then pull through and then you're just doing a double crochet there and while you have it bent over then just do another one because it's already bent over and, and easy to access. Okay, so you got two double crochets in there and finish it off with putting a single crochet in the top of that, that gray double crochet and you're gonna do that uh, in every stitch all the way around. So let's do the next one. So the next one here we have to come in from behind and go right into this same stitch right here. So let's just bend it out of the way and go in then there and double crochet. Actually it's easier now that I've already done it a couple times. So that's kind of interesting. So double crochet twice and then single crochet right on the top of that same stitch. So what I want you to do, I'll show you one more time and then I want you to go all the way around. You can see the texture is now starting. It's awesome. So you're just kind of bending it out of the way and putting two double crochets in first. I've never seen a stitch like this before which is awesome. It's always nice to learn something new and then single crochet on the top of that double crochet. So please do that all the way around for round number four. So as we finish number four we still have to go in and push in the ones that are double crocheted down. So it looks like it's awkward right at the end but it's not. You have to go in the very first stitch that the other um, this gray one is into. So just going in there just there. So you've already kind of done the single crochet afterward. It's just a matter of getting this one filled in. So it's the same one that you just had to do the slip stitch before down here. So now that you're done that you're just going to join it to the first single crochet like so. So oh you know what we didn't do is that we have to make sure that we change the color. So pull that gray short or uh, tight sorry and push uh, pull that gray through to finish. <laughs> don't forget to do that. So let's uh, move on to round number five together. So let's begin round number five. We're going to start up now and we're going to chain up five, uh, four. So one, two, three and four. So that counts as a double crochet and chain one. We're going to skip one stitch and we're going to go to the second and it's the second double crochet of this blue one if you're paying attention and you're going to double crochet into that one. So this one is a very easy round. You're going to chain one and then you're going to skip one and go to the next stitch after and double crochet. So chain one, skip one and double crochet in the next. So please do that all the way around for round number five. So as you come around in round number five, chain one and then you're just going to slip stitch to the third chain up in the beginning but might, might make sure that when you do that you pull the blue tight and then use that blue then to pull through and through and then pull the gray tight once again. So let's move on to round number six. Let's move along to round number six. This is an actually really easy round as well. So it's gonna chain one and we're gonna single crochet in the same one that we did the join. Here's the neat thing. So you have skipped one stitch in each, in between each one of these. That's where the two double crochets are gonna be playing into this time around. So just reaching back, just going, just moving it forward and double crochet right into the skip stitch that you did before and put in two double crochet. Okay and then you're gonna come to the next double crochet in here in the gray and you're going to single crochet to bring that in balance. Okay, so here's where the repeat pattern is. So just go down, go into the one that's been skipped. So just push it forward, the material, and access it from behind. And you're gonna put in two double crochet. And then you're going to sing, uh, single crochet at the top of the next gray one for you. Please do that same thing going all the way around for round number six. So I'm coming on to the end of round number six. Remember I still have to get that one right in before I'm finished over here. This is two double crochets in the same and then we are going to do a slip stitch and but before we do it pull everything nice and tight and then just stick in your hook in the first single crochet. Drop the blue and grab the next color up and pull through. So now the game plan is gonna change uh, slightly in round number seven. It's not a big deal but it will change the look just slightly to give you more texture. Let's begin round number seven next.
So let's begin round number seven. You're going to notice in the diagram that there is a arc that is underneath the stitches of the single crochet. That means that it is the back loop of your particular project that you want to work with. So let's begin anyway and we're gonna chain up one and in the same stitch. So if you're new to crochet there's two loops that exist. The front loop is called the front loop and the other loop that's furthest away from you is the back loop. So coming straight in to where it's doing the join you want to go into the back loop only and you want to single crochet. So one and do it one more time. So you're gonna have two single crochets only into the back loop. So now what you're going to do then for this entire round here's the repeat pattern. You're going to put in eight single crochets in the back loops in a row. So let's count those out. So one and go into the back loop, two, this is three, this is four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you got eight in a row and now you're going to put in two single crochets into the next one. So the repeat pattern if you recall okay and you're going to put in eight single crochets and then two. So when you come all the way around you've already got the two in here so there will be eight single crochets leading up to the end. So let me just uh, get you to the end of this row and our round and then we'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm coming at the round uh, number seven and I've got my two in there and the remaining eight stitches as I mentioned will be just one single crochet. So I'm not even counting already I just kind of checked already in advance. So you, you know that's true because you started off with two right off to the very beginning. So I just wanna take a, a quick verification count before I fasten. So here it is. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then of course we want to pull, pull our blue tight and then we just want to join it to the beginning. Top uh, single crochet, drop the gray, bring up the blue and pull the gray tight. So let's uh, move on to round number eight. So here we go for round number eight is a simple round. It's gonna be chaining a four which counts as a double crochet and chain one space. So one, two, three, and four. Skip one stitch. Okay, so skip one stitch and go to the next and double crochet in. Just like this and then chain one, skip one, and double crochet into the next. Please do that same thing going all the way around. You've learned how to do this before and I'll see you at the end of this round. So chain one, skip one and double crochet into the next. So coming up all the way to the end of round number eight, double crochet, chain one and there's one that you have to skip and then you go to the third chain up for a slip stitch, pull everything nice and tight, pull the gray tight and then push, pull three sorry and then pull that blue tighter once again. So let's move along to round number nine. Let's begin round number nine, another simplistic round. So chain up one and one single crochet in the same one that you did the join. So now you have these chain one or the spaces that you've been skipping down here. So you're gonna fill each one of those ones with two double crochets. You've done that already before. So two double crochets and then you come to the next stitch which is the top of the next double crochet and single crochet that in. Okay, so just jump to the next one that's straight down here. Shift the work forward, double crochet twice and then push it back and single crochet on the top of that double crochet. So you're seeing the texture is just awesome. So continue moving along around just doing the same thing and I'll see you at the end of this round. Don't forget when you come around on round number nine don't forget that last one right in down here. Get that in and fill it in should be obvious to you anyway but if it's not just make sure you look for it. And then you're just going to join it to the beginning. So pull that blue tight and then just join it to the top of the first single crochet. Drop the gray, pull the blue through and pull that gray nice and tight. So let's uh, begin round number 10. Let's begin round number 10. We're gonna chain up four again. You already know how to do this. So one, two, three and four. There's your double crochet and chain one. Skip the first one and go to the second one over and just double crochet. So that's all we're gonna do for this round and so just chain up one and skip one and double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Please do that all the way around for round number 10. So I'm finishing up round number 10. I'm just doing my last double crochet. Chain one, 
and you can see that I had to skip one here and go to the third chain up. Okay, pull the gray tight, push, pull through and then tighten up that blue. So we're gonna change up our story a little bit in this next round. This is when you need to buckle down and when you have to pay attention probably the most. So now this is the conclusion of round number 10. Let's move on to round number 11. This is when the story is gonna change and this is when you gotta pay attention the most. So up until this point every time we've done this with the, the double crochets and the chain one we've come back afterwards and we have put it in two double crochets to fill it in. We're no longer gonna do that every one like we had before. If we do that this circle will never be circle and it will start to buckle up on you. So we have to watch what we do going forward. So let's begin and how it works is that you're going to chain up one and it's gonna be one single crochet in the first one. You already kinda did that before. So you're gonna come to the one that you skipped and you're gonna put in two double crochets like you had before. Now if I could actually do the stitch it would be even awesome, <laughs> more awesome. So let's just double crochet twice. So here's the thing you gotta watch for. So here's the repeat pattern. The next one is the single crochet. So those will never change. On the tops of these double crochets you always have a single crochet. But the next two that you have will just be one single crochet in each of these spaces. So coming right down double crochet only one time. And then single crochet on the top of the next double crochet you're gonna run into. And then the next one again is just one single or one double crochet down in and then single crochet on the top. Like so. So you have to remember this round. It's gonna be two double crochets in the first one. The next two will just be one double crochet each and so then you carry on in that pattern. So let's carry on just do one more repeat. So the next one will be two double crochets down here. So one and two. And then the, a single crochet in the top. Then the next one is just one double crochet down here. Single crochet in the next top. And the next one is one double crochet down here. And single crochet in the top. So you get the pattern. So it's gonna be two double crochets then uh, one in each and then two and then one in each and follow it. Make sure that you do your single crochets on the top. This is round number 11. Continue in the same pattern going all the way around. So let's finish round number 11. So we had our two double crochets sinking down. We had the one in between and the single crochets on the top. Don't forget that last one that you need to do. Right here double crochet in behind and it's only one sitting behind and then you're just going to join it to the first single crochet and just pull everything nice and tight like you had before and let's bring back our blue and then we're going to go for our next round which is round number 12. So let's begin round number 12. I'm just going to show you a quick demonstration. So we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna go to the back loops only and we are going to put in two single crochet into the back loop like I had showed you before in the back loops. So this span all the way around is 20 single crochets in a row and then two into the next 20 and then two. So this make sure you continue in the back loop and count. So one, two and three and four and go all the way to 20 and then put in two into the next and then 20 and two into the next. Please do that all the way around for round number 12. I'm coming to the end of round number 12 and just single crocheting in the final there was 20 in a row and the way back here there was two into the same one. So I want to join it to the first one single crochet pulling everything nice and tight. The trick is to pull it tight so you don't end up with the sloppy look and join and pull it through and through with the new color. Let's begin round number 13. So now you need a quick break right all that thinking. So let's uh, begin again. We're gonna chain four. So one, two, three and four. It's a double crochet and chain one. Skip the next one and double crochet into the next. You're gonna do that all the way around. So chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Please do that all the way around for round number 13. So as you come to the end of round number 13 again just uh, make sure you're skipping one at the end which should be working out and you got your chain one and join it to the third chain up of the beginning. Oh make sure that when you join it pull everything tight <laughs> and then pull through and through and that's good to go. Let's begin round number 14. 
Let's begin round number 14. It's gonna start off just with a slightly different twist right at the very beginning but it's only appearing one time so it's easy to do. So you're gonna chain up one and you're gonna put two single crochets in the same one you did the join. So one and two. That's the only time you have to do that two into the same one when it comes to these single crochets at the very top. We're now going to come down to the one that we uh, down here okay and we are going to put in um, two double crochets into that one. So one and two. So we have to grow incrementally again on this round. So it's like before, remember before when we did this we did uh, two double crochets and then the next one had two into the same one. Well this time around there's gonna be two into the next one that we just did and then single at the top and the next four spaces one, two, three and four they will all have one double crochet that sinks down. So let's just uh, review that. So we're gonna come down one double crochet and then single crochet up the next. So that was one of four and you're gonna sink down and do the next one and then single crochet in the next. So that was two of four, single or double crochet in the next, single crochet in the top. So that was three of four and this is the fourth one. So it's one double crochet way down there. So the, the repeat pattern for this entire round is the next one sinking down will have two into the same one, two double crochet just like so and then double crochet or single crochet at the top. So the next four when you sink down there just be uh, one double crochet in each and then still continue to do the single crochet at the top. Please maintain that pattern all the way around. So I'm coming up to the end of round number 14 just filling everything in and I'm just maintaining the stitch counts as I talked about earlier and we're gonna come into the first one just like so just pull everything nice and tight and switch off your color to the other one at this point. So let's go round number 15. Round number 15 is like a holiday again so we're just gonna chain up four. So one, two, three and four and then you're just gonna skip one and go to the second over for a double crochet. You already know how to do this kind of round so chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Please do that all the way around for round number 15. So let's conclude round number 15. We're coming around to the end. Just chain one, skipping one and go to the third chain up and just pull everything tight and let's grab our next color back. And that will be blue all over again. So what we're gonna do now is round number 16 is really quite an easy round. It's exactly what you did already with sinking down the double crochets like you had with four in a row and then the next one has two. So let's begin. So we're gonna chain up one and there, there'll be one single crochet in the first one. So the first one that sinks down here will be two double crochets. One and two and then the next one is a single crochet at the top. So the next fours that you have to sink down are just gonna be all double crochets one by itself and then the fifth one is going to be the two again. So let's just quickly do that. So we're gonna sink down for double crochet, single at the top. So that was one. Come down again to the next one and single to the top. This is two and coming down and to the top. This is three and then this is the fourth to the top. So the repeat pattern then is the next one will have two double crochets that sink down and then one to the top. So then the next four are just one double crochets sinking down and then the next one is uh, two. Please do that all the way around for round number 16. When you get to the end of round number 16 what's gonna happen is that there's not gonna be four on double crochets that sit by themselves. You're just gonna fill in the remaining after you've been doing the repeat pattern all the way around. So just fill in the remaining after you do it. Um, you'll notice that's not an even count. So if you've not got an even count don't worry about it at this point. It's just off by one. There's an extra double crochet that is sitting by itself. If you look at the diagram you can see that as well. And before finishing this off just pull everything nice and tight and get in that last double crochet right down at the bottom. And really the hard work is now really done on this project. So let's just switch our yarn out. And the next two rounds, number 16, or sorry 17 and 18 are really quite simple and those are just uh, gonna be final kickers of this beautiful pattern. So let's uh, begin again in round number 17. 
So round number 17 we're gonna start with the back loops only and it's really gonna be an easy job. So we're just gonna chain up one and we're gonna put two into the first one into the back loop. So two single crochets and then the next 11 will be one single crochet in each of the back loops. So this is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And then there's gonna be two into the next one. So two singles into the next. So then the next eleven will then have one each and then two into the next and then the next eleven. Please do that all the way around for round number seventeen. So I'm just finishing up round number 17 and I already put my two into the same one way back where and um, I don't need to worry about counting that because I'm at the right counts. You know what I noticed? I was looking up at my monitor and I noticed that the back and I, and I was not really sure. Look how the back is this color and I was thinking in my point of view I think that it's hard to tell here but you can kind of see that the gray is dominant and then you see the, the, the blue is dominant and then gray is dominant once again. So when I flipped it over to the back that's gotta be true because that's the way it looks on the back. So um, I even did the black and white one. I never noticed that was happening like that before. Actually I really like the back too. So I'm coming all the way to the beginning of where I started. Pull everything nice and tight. We're officially done using this color. So I'm just going to slip stitch and using the blue to finish. So I'm going to trim off the other yarn and I'll show you how to weave that in later. So I'm just gonna trim it nice and long. So I can get a darning needle into that later. And now we're going to go to round number 18. You're going to notice that there is an arrow going in the opposite direction than the direction that you have been going in. That's a reverse single crochet. So to do the reverse single crochet, just pull everything nice and tight. So the, do the reverse single crochet. You're going to chain up one and go into the same one that you did the join and going in and single crochet and then pull through two. So what's the difference? Instead of moving forward you're moving backwards. So you're going in towards your hand. So you just dive into the next one that's behind it. Yarning over pull through and pull through two. <laughs> So you keep moving as a single crochet backwards and it's called the reverse single crochet. This is also called a crab stitch and you just keep on moving backwards behind. So you just, you have to get in a bit of a rhythm with this one. The crab stitch uh, we have dedicated tutorials just for the stitch alone. It takes a bit of getting used to. Um, I've done it quite a few over, the, uh, few times over the years and as long as you relax with the hook you end up with a really wonderful a seam line or a line right at the end. So I want you to reverse single crochet all the way around for round number 18 and then you're done and then I'll review quickly on how to fasten in your ends and then we'll be done with today's project. When you come all the way around you just wanna go right to the very end. There was one in each and then you wanna slip stitch to the beginning just like so. So I'm just gonna slip it and leave a tail. So this tail I'm gonna leave on and I'm gonna pull through the loop. Okay, so let's flip this upside down and let's deal with our tail ends. So I buried in the tail ends at the beginning. If you didn't just throw it through a darning needle and just being able to finish those out. And then for the other two strands that you were left with, we want to make sure that we can bury those in. So let's grab this gray first. Okay it through the eye of the needle and what I want to do is just keep it in the gray and just kind of bury it underneath the stitches. I don't want to go to the front side of the project and because this is like a knitted yarn it's kind of really tough to get stuff through sometimes which is a great thing because it means it will never fall out on you. So go back and forth inside the stitch work in the back a total of three times and you'll want to do this with both of your strands that you have. I have a very sharp uh, darning needle here. So I don't wanna get too uh, carried away with pulling too hard because I don't wanna stab myself. And then what I want to do then is then grab the remaining one that I have 
and if you do it right you can make the edge look pretty much perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna just turn it over to the front side just to look at it. See I wanna kinda drag it over so I'm gonna just drag it underneath some stitches over here and that'll pull that over. See, just pulls that over and then I wanna turn it to the back side now and I wanna stay towards the back side for finishing this off. So how many times am I gonna go through the work? A total of three times. So one, two, and then come back through it's three. So any other loose ends that you may have, you just want to use a darning needle and secure those in. And then you can go right down to the project. And now all you just have to do is lay it over top and just give it a, a few good stretches and your placemat is good to go. So this is what it looks like from a distance. It's really quite amazing and whether you do it in this color or whether you want to do it in a solid that's completely up to you. I think either way the texture is a winning on this one and uh, you can have a lot of fun and of course this was my first mistake that I did but uh, you can see it looks pretty awesome and you're pretty consistent in the size. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as the crochet crowd.com. We'll see you again for more free patterns and ideas coming ahead real soon. Bye bye now.